I need a motor upgrade for my boat. I love my boat. I love the little 25 horse EFI four stroke that I've, I've got for it. I did a whole series on it. It's just, I've outgrown it. It's not enough for what I need. I need to go faster. I know I look all right on the outside, but deep down inside, you know, I want more horsepower. Consulted with Fallon Marine and uh, Karina there told me, you know, I could either get a 50 horse command thrust or like for about 10 pounds or so heavier, a little bit heavier. And just for a little bit more money, I could just get a 60 horse, non command thrust. I don't need command thrust. I don't have a very big boat. I got a tiny boat. So a 60 horse sounded kind of nice. I mean, I could get all the power of a 50 horse without having to go full throttle. That is going to do a lot. That's going to do a lot for me. I think it's going to do great. I have a family. They're only getting bigger and heavier, including me. So I need, I need horsepower, but I also need a transom upgrade for all that horsepower. So the wooden transom I stuck in there is going to probably explode if I put a 60 on it. So I don't really know what to do here. I really can't find any other way around a welded aluminum transom inside the boat. And so I'm wondering how to do that, ways to do that, how we're going to be able to get one. And then when we went to Tennessee not too long ago, which the series is coming up for that next, um, we cut, Nate just brought a transom, like a square non-modified transom, just like a, just like a, two by 12 piece of plywood you would find. He brought like a transom, but it was modified. It had tubes, it had sheets on both sides. It was, it just needed to be cut to fit for the boat. You know, we took the old transom out, traced it, cut it to fit and shoved an aluminum transom in there like nothing. And it, all of a sudden there's an aluminum, tra an awesome one that was like 10 times stronger than any wood transom. And so I was like, man, I, I need this. And so I got one and we're going to install that thing. It's going to be invaluable. It's going to be the most important piece of modification on this boat to date. So let's check it out. Hey, I dust this old thing off, but I really want that transom in here. I want it in my boat now. It's so beautiful and it's aluminum. It's everything I ever wanted in a transom. It's going to solve all my problems. Really, it's the best thing. It is fantastic. Look at it. Look at it. It's amazing. It's amazing. So amazing. And I'm going to go and lay waste to this. This boat has been remodified twice. The first time I cut this from a 20 inch transom to a 16 inch transom to um, accommodate this short shaft Merc that I bought. It was a stupid thing to do. If you have a 20 inch transom, buy a long shaft motor. Don't, don't go down. Um, we're going to try and fix that though with this transom. I asked for a specifically high transom to reintroduce a 20 inch transom. And I'm taking all this stuff that I did during the second gen mod of this boat. All these short accommodations are coming off and we're going to get to ripping out the transom. All right, so I guess the next step is taking off his motor because, you know, it's got to go. I got it off. I lifted it off. <laughs> No engine hoist, all American muscle. What it's about? Freaking motor is fat. How fat that thing is. Okay, examining the transom, examining the transom. So I wanna say I'm, I'm, per I'm honestly personally proud of this. I did this. It's one of our transom kits. We actually sell these on our sites for manual transoms. They work fantastic for small outboards. But it's just not gonna work for what we're gonna do now. And what we're gonna put on this now is going to you know, really tweak this out. And we've got to take all this tomfoolery off, which I will miss, but hey, it is what it is. The second gen mod that I did for this boat was when I added the jack plate and I added these extensions that went along to accommodate the shallow water anchor poles that I had. And then I also put back the pole light systems two of them to accommodate Yoltek sticks and obviously the back uh, nav light. And it worked really well. It was out of the way the co-angler and it gave me a more, a better field of view for the Yoltek, but it also got corroded because water got on it a lot more. So we'll probably be putting it back on the inside of the boat to avoid that. I also recapped the top of the transom with two pieces of angle that I made into a seat channel. Um, wasn't the best, but it did work at least for my skill level at the time, but now we have better stuff to do. Still very nice, still very resin coated, a million holes from the screws. Looks like it'll come out. So let's see. When you're about to pull the transom, you have to kind of go in and pry 
whatever the tra the transom's likely stuck and corroded to the back of the aluminum plate and to the front one so you got to kind of go in there and repry and re-loosen everything make sure all screws and hardware are out and there's a lot of tomfoolery there could possibly be like hidden pins and stuff that are in there just jamming it up so you got to get out everything and then i would recommend screwing in on the very the left and the right the far left and right and you just pull up with a piece of with pliers keep pulling keep working it working it working it until it starts coming out and that's how you get it out now you can use this piece to trace on your brand new transom so you can have a direct match direct fit make sure you get the correct overlay because some of our transoms are thicker and more robust for bigger motors and then we have some that are rated specifically for like a 15 to 20 horse that'll accommodate uh, a lighter 25 you want to get that direct thickness you don't want to unmatch this this one is actually a little bit thicker uh, when I ordered it then the stock transom even with the top plate it's still a little thicker so we're gonna have to modify this one so closer examination of the transom it's just um, well look at it parts of it were okay you know this some of these parts are but I mean really where it sat the major core part where it sat down there where it sat underneath the sheet where it sat in the middle where the motor constantly flexed on it you could see it start to really take form I just don't know what to say about it other than it's just well, first, I didn't use the best wood. We didn't note that. We didn't note that. Not to use the hardwood plywood because you thought it was strong. That the fur rated probably would have done a little better. So I'd like to see what fur rated do. Although there was no flex out of this, but you can definitely tell this crap, this whole top fancy layer of crap that that wasn't on there. But that really was just like one one millimeter layer thin. So that's a little disappointing. Paid a lot of money. Paid like a hundred bucks for that piece of wood. When we go down in here, because you can see where it's it's clean, it's clean, it's clean all the way, so it starts to eroding. So it started to erode right in the little trap, the little uh, piece of channel that you slide the transom into. We start seeing the most degradation. So I'm guessing these pieces of wood in here that are that are uh, solid and not disrupted, that was the actual oak, which actually held pretty good. And these were the veneer layers, which is just like lesser, weaker filler wood. And you can definitely tell that crap was going. Yeah, so this was, you can definitely tell that's not strong at all. That is definitely, so using the hardwood was wrong. He was right. He said the veneer layers would eventually fail and that the, the, the three or four plies of actual uh, hardwood inside your transom, the actual oak, that wouldn't be able to hold against weakening veneer layers. So these veneer layers were going, but they don't have veneer layers in fur rated plywood. Saying that fur rated plywood may not be as strong as oak, but all the layers are meant for you know to hold stuff this was meant for like a countertop where none of this was ever going to be exposed to it so i'd like to think that a fur a fur rated plywood transom would have done way better than this one i think we pulled this one out just in time seeing how it's not doing too great and how these are just splitting and voiding up and just puddling up and then i caked the bottom of this with uh marine resin I think I triple coated it and I paid special attention to the grain because the grain always likes to soak the marine resin in. And though I don't see any mold, we do see that it broke through. I don't see any mold, not any. So we know with the, with the amount of saturation and water that, that hit this, that at least it didn't break through, that the wood did soak up, especially the veneer layer soaked up a lot of it, but even then still the warping and the cracking and the flexing that a motor does to a transom, the transom absolutely gets beat up the worst on the boat over here you see it where water physically warped this and this was the back because i paint i painted and primered the back to um try and give the the back layer a protective coating and i even that didn't really work really well the the paint stuck and kind of sucked into the transom itself and that was after this was cured completely cured not sticky not tacky and so we pulled a lot of that off and just what kind of crap is all this? Yeah, I don't really know what to say about all this, but it is for sure a crap show. There's some warping there. That piece is actually coming out. So parts of it were breaking for sure. I mean, if this bottom part was going to go, then the whole transom was going to go. The bottom part was what was staying inside, inside the, the seat channel, so it just was not great. I ordered the stronger transom out of the lot that we have on our website. Now we can make anything to custom order, but this one, like as far as you can just buy it and it comes to your door, we have it like this. Um, it's welded on one side 
uh, cross beams to the piece of sheet metal and riveted on the other side. The riveted side is the modifiable side in case you need to cut any of the sheet metal out. We will be doing that because we only have an inch and a half gap here made for the standard inch and a half wooden transoms. Also note that we do have stock transoms that are rated for a 15 to 25 horse that'll fit in a little gap like this, but really I'm gonna put a 60 horse on there and uh, just the same reason I wanna run a standard plywood transom, I don't wanna run um, one of our smaller transoms. We're going to run the thickest, most robust transom with uh, really serious cross beams on the inside of the sheets. But first we have to trace and cut it to fit. So we have traced the end. Remember I cut it down to a 16 inch transom. It is now going to go back to a 20 inch transom. It'll be aluminum on aluminum. So it's the best way that we could do it. If we were going to be doing a standard wood transom again, it would be a big giant mess to try and mesh all that together. But because it's aluminum on aluminum, it makes it really easy for me to re-put that wall. And if you wanna raise your transit from a 16 to a 20, or I'm 15 to a 20, then uh, this is definitely a better way, easier way to do it. It's much more modifiable this way. If you do order one of these transoms, make sure you order one for this specific boat because this one is ordered for a DB aluminum hull, which is why it is shaped this way. But most transoms for John boats are not shaped this way. We have one specifically for John boats. So when you do go to modify it, you don't start cutting away all the cross beams and ruin the transom. So we have this one specifically. I have a 15 and a half foot um, deep V smoker craft. And the same thing would go for deep V aluminum trackers. Alumacrafts, Lunds, same, they have the same style of boat. If you're trying to modify one of the stronger, more robust transoms into uh, your boat where it's not really accommodated for something like this, you can modify the riveted section. We have a welded piece of sheet metal that is a welded to all the cross beams that gives the majority of the structural integrity. And then we have a riveted piece on the other side, which still, you know, it completes the whole thing like a sandwich, but you can modify that strip because it's riveted. You can actually take it off. So we will be taking this off and then we will be, you just barely, barely skimming through, not even all the way through, just enough to where you can bend it and just pull it out without even touching the cross beams. You don't want to touch the structural integrity of the cross beams at all. Just take it off, take out the, the rivets there and then re-put rivets into the structural beams where needed. And we'll be doing that next. All right, we're gonna make some, so a few more holes. We attach the sheet metal, no big deal, no big deal. Because we cut all the spots where it would have to have been flush and it's gonna sit inside those channels, we're using standard pan head rivets, which are gonna be stronger overall. Here we are, here it is, and here it is ready to get dropped in. You really wanna clean that transom through. There's all kinds of crap and corrosion and stuck pieces. You wanna get all the extra stuck wood out, all that, all of it out. Get all of it out because when you try to put this transom in, it's going to fit tight and you don't want anything in there hindering that because uh, this is not going to fit the way where if you're going to redo a wood transom, this is going to fit maybe much tighter, but we're going to get it in. <laughs> we have no choice. It's going in. I have, it's either this or I get a new boat. Mission success. We did it. Advantages. And this is the main reason why if I ever had to replace the transom again, it was gonna have to be aluminum. Because I cut out this piece. It's transom used to be this high, or maybe actually it's maybe a little higher. It's maybe about 21 inches right now. It's a little bit thicker. Because the bigger thing we're taking away is we can rivet this frame right to the transom. Right to it. I'm pretty excited about that, because that's how we're gonna get about around a lot of the other stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead, I kind of grinded down the mess inside here from the earlier transom. 
And what I'm gonna do now is just kinda clean this up, put some sealant in here, and then rivet it. And I'm gonna rivet it right back on, right back on. We're also gonna be sticking, and what I'm really excited about, other than just going fishing on my boat again, which is an awesome boat to fish on. This is an Atlas mini jack. I don't know if you can tell how small that is, but that is a small jack plate. It weighs like 25 pounds. 25 pounds, that's it. Just pick it up with one hand like nothing. It's freaking dope. It's just a jack, it's not a power tilt, but the motor I have already has power tilt on it, so that's what it is. Atlas Micro Jack. Teach Marine. We have these on our website, by the way. The link will be in the description of this video. So check it out. And it's also on our website, tvnation.net. Just search Atlas Micro Jack. So this whole project was a little bit more complicated than I gave it credit for. So we're gonna spread it over a series of two to three videos and a little mini series to show you in depth how we attached all this together. The process we went through, things to look for, and ultimately how we upgraded this boat in a very substantial way that will make all the difference once we reach on the water. This is not a sponsored video. We will never be sponsored. We will never accept sponsors. Our only sponsors are our audience and fans. So we wanna thank our audience and fans for allowing us to do all these cool things. If you like this video, please subscribe, like and share and comment. It helps us trend more than you'll ever know and expands our audience base. If you guys want more content from this channel, just more overall, including all these things, consider becoming part of our pro staff here on patreon.com slash tbnation, which is how we do the majority of what we do out here. Also, please check out our website when you have time to find anything you need to build a tiny boat. tbnation.net. Thank you, guys. Tight lines. Be safe.